Hey, what's up everyone? Tim here from Everyday Tactical Vids. A cold, wet New Hampshire day, a great day to get out and work on some survival skills. Today we're gonna to be testing out two products. The first one is the SOL Scout Survival Kit, and the other one is this right here, the SE Hungless. Now both of these products are coming to us from Smoky Mountain Knife Works. They partner with us for this review. I wanna send you over to their website to check out this gear and other gear, smkw.com, smkw, Smoky Mountain Knife Works. Com. What we're going to do today is head into the woods and operate off of this kind of scenario. Imagine you're in the woods, you get lost, and all you have on you is the clothes on your back, the SOL Scout Survival Kit, and the SE Hungless. Could you set up a shelter? Could you get food? Could you get fire? Let's head into the woods and find out. As I'm headed deeper into the woods here, one of the first things I'll say to you is that this weather I'm in right now is perfect hypothermia weather. So people think, well, it's springtime, you know, it's 50 degrees, it's probably gonna warm up today, but it's raining, it's been raining, it's cold, it's damp, and this is perfect weather to get hypothermia. So you get a little bit wet, you get a little bit sweaty, a breeze comes through, and then you get lost in the woods, and you were planning on just hiking out at the end of the day, all of a sudden now you gotta bed down for the night or something like that, bad, bad situation. In a survival scenario like this, one of the first things you wanna do is think about shelter. So it's not raining right now, but it could rain at any minute. So you can see behind me there's a small grove of hemlocks, and I'd be hanging out there because if, if I can't put up a shelter quickly, at least I've got some cover from the rain that's coming in. So once I've got at least a little sense of where I'm gonna build a shelter or some cover for the moment, I'm gonna start assessing the gear that I have. So what I wanna do now is actually look at what's in the survival kit as well as take a look at the hung list. So let's readjust the camera so we can see what resources we actually have on us right now. Let's start off and talk about the hung list here. Over a 16 inch profile from end to end, your blade is a little bit less than 10 and a half inches. It is 1095 for your steel, so you gotta be aware of that in relation to moisture and rust and things like that. But again, in a survival scenario, your, your goal is to stay alive and to get out, so I'm not overly worried about uh, rust and moisture from one day in this uh, scenario that we're operating in. I will tell you that at 0.188 inches thick, it's a nice thickness to uh, be manageable, but also thick enough to do some aggressive chopping. So I look forward to using this in today's scenario. The other thing I wanna point out here is this pouch down at the bottom. This is also a pouch from Smoky Mountain Knife Works. This is an SE pouch. It's actually made for some of the smaller knives, not the hungless, but I attached it using the two bolts and then some paracord. And now I've got basically all the items from that SOL kit inside here other than the, um, the Mylar blanket. So it won't fit that. Um, I might be able to kind of you know, cram it in if I had to and I took the tin out that's included with the SE kit. But uh, I like the idea of having everything right there on my, uh, on my sheath in that system. If I, get, I could get the Mylar bl blanket in here, even better. But right now I'm happy with the fact that I could fit pretty much all the gear from that kit in here and then just put that Mylar blanket in my back pocket. All right, so you've got the hungless here. You got your Kydex sheath. You do have ballistic nylon that it's attached to. And so this thing just rides nicely. The whole kit, the whole setup, pretty pretty low profile, even though it's a, a larger blade. It's not like it's sticking out 15 inches or something like that. Rides nice and smooth along my leg. All right, let's actually open up the uh, SOL kit that I've put into the SE pouch and see what we have there. As I mentioned, the Mylar blanket doesn't fit into the, uh, to the tin or into the pouch over there on the, uh, on the sheath, but you can see that all the items fit nicely into this little Altoid size tin that they have included, uh, that SE's included with the pouch. So that being said, we've got our Mylar blanket. We're gonna open this up and see. I'm trying to figure out, figure out if there's two of them in here or just one. We'll actually see that in a minute. Um, we do have, take this out. We do have a fire, fire starting option. These are the quick tinders. And then this little item creates sparks here. Let's see if we can show you. Now, I, I gotta be honest, I was a little bit skeptical when I said this is my fire starting mechanism with this. It looks like we have included a fire steel on the side here at, at first, but when you feel it, you're like, oh no, that's rubber just to hold on to this thing. So yeah, for me, a fire steel in a scenario when I'm out in the woods is probably gonna be my favorite option or my best option, but this is what came with it, so we're gonna see how that works. You do have this whistle, and I'm gonna actually give a test to that right now so you can hear what it sounds like, so prepare your ears. Nice high pitch whistle, definitely gonna get somebody's attention. We got some duct tape here, so you can use this for medical purposes or a ton of other uses. 
do have a small, oops, drop that there, small compass. That's going to be good for travel. We do have a reflective mirror, which in a day like today is not going to do a ton of good, but good to have this to, you know, if you had to check something, you know, maybe over your shoulder a little bit, uh, maybe a cut that you had, not totally on your back, but are kind of maybe on your side. Certainly could use that, obviously, for signaling. And then they have the fishing kit here, which says hooks, lines, sinkers, and swivels. And we'll see if we can actually catch a fish or two today with this kit. I did leave the instructions in here. These are uh, these are damp already, but they are paper, and so this could actually help get a fire started. So that's everything in the kit. Let's actually open up the uh, the mylar, whatever it is, bag or baby sack, and we'll actually uh, test and see what this looks like, how big it is. So I found a pretty good area to set up camp. I'm gonna actually back up now from the camera, and we're gonna see how much of a resource we have in this SOL. I don't know if it's one or two mylar blankets, but let's uh, let's find out. As you can see, it is only one blanket. Um, it is also very light. If you've never used these before, they're extremely light. So be careful when you're opening them and using them. And also, I mean, you can just see we had a slight breeze in that corner already blew over. Now, the nice thing about this, 96 inches by 60 inches, so it's quite large. It's made to fit two people. Um, the scenario now, the question is, do I wrap myself up in it or do I use it for my shelter roof? Since this is going to be uh, an impervious material, I'm definitely going to use it as a shelter roof. Now, the other cool thing is, I'll show you, they have all kinds of information here about collecting water, signaling a plane, starting your fire. There's a lot of survival information there, as well as things like don't panic. Here's how to, you know, keep your, keep your mindset clear. And the other cool thing is, you can see the underside is silver, so that's going to reflect the heat back down to me. The upside is orange, so that's going to get attention. If somebody was coming through the woods looking for me, or maybe, you know, if a plane was going overhead, it's going to be tough to see me in the woods, but at least have something bright that's shining back up. So here's what I'm looking at for my shelter location. You know, I'll about probably put my back up against that, put a fire out here, and build the roof over here. I always do the up, down, out check. So look overhead, up, no widowmakers, nothing that's gonna fall on me. Nothing on the ground that's particularly dangerous. It's definitely damp because of the rain, but I'm not setting up on an ant's nest or a snake den or something like that. And then looking out, you know, making sure I'm not on a game trail or in a place where anything, you know, out and about could be a danger to me. And uh, yeah, this looks good. So let's get that shelter started. So I've got this kind of Y stick here, I've got my horizontal beam, we're going to set it up like this. And I'm not going to put a ton of extra weight on this, so you know I'll put probably three supports or two supports and then put that, that um, mylar blanket on the top, so that should be good enough, good strong support beam. This will stay in place, let's get a couple more of these. Here's the pond right by the shelter that I'm working on now and you can probably see it's starting to rain so I want to get this cover up so I can get underneath and stay dry. Alright so here's my second support beam. I was thinking of maybe doing three in a tripod but the rain is actually starting so instead what I'm going to do is just rig this up like this. I could put some support beams across if I need to but right now I'm going to get that cover up so I can get underneath because the rain is starting to fall. So here's what it looks like. I just threw it up and you can obviously see, boom, there's just a huge sag there. If we get a big rain, that is going to be a major issue. So um, I do have it up if I needed to crawl into there right now to get out of the rain. 
I'd at least have something to cover me. What I'm gonna do now is get some of those cross beams to support it. That'll also put this corner out a little bit further to give me a little bit more of a shelter. I am in my shelter and just in time. I'm gonna be quiet here just to see if you can actually hear the rain falling down on top there. You probably can on camera. I can definitely hear it, it's, it's pretty loud. Um, but yeah, this, so, so now we're in a scenario where at least I have shelter. I don't have fire, I don't have food, I haven't collected water. Um, but imagine in this scenario, I'm stuck here. I'm just gonna reach into my survival tin from the SOL um, kit and take out my whistle. So in this scenario, maybe I'm injured, I'm lost, whatever it is, but now I've got something over my head and I've got my whistle and I could just sit here and, you know, once every three minutes, five minutes, whatever. And I don't want to do an SOS signal because I don't want somebody to actually come in and, you know, think I'm hurt or something, but just whistle every once in a while. See, see if anybody comes and finds me. I definitely have a place to stay out of the the rain that's falling. It's definitely damp. I'm sitting on my jacket, which is better than sitting right on the cold ground. I can tell you that already I do feel a little a little bit of a chill um, on my backside because I'm sitting on the coat, but still it's on the ground. Um, but this is worlds apart of just standing out there in the cold rain or trying to hunker down under a hemlock tree. So we're gonna hang out here for a little bit, see if the rain will die down. If it does, we can go out. And the next stage for me would be building a fire and we'll see if we can get one of those uh, Tinder quick started with that little spark creating device from the SOL Scout. So far the hunger list has been great. Um, it you know it reminds me of some larger, this, uh, this is more of a chopper than just like a straight up knife, but it's it's extremely manageable and that's a, a term I like to use when it comes to a large knife. Some knives are just really, you know the blade is so heavy, you've got great chopping power, but as far as managing it, it's kind of hard to, hard, to, hard to handle. This one, neutral handle, I can lock in, I can swing. I do have that piece of paracord I'm using now, but if I put the paracord on here, man, I could lock in and really, really chop with this thing even, even more. And I was able to chop through, you know, some wood that was an inch and a half across up to maybe three and a half inches, and then also do some of that, that chopping just those little branches and such off. So, uh, hungless, definitely a win in this scenario. Now, one advantage of the rain is that you do have a water source if you can collect it. So. Um, I was concerned that maybe the rain would be hitting this rock and running down. If it does, I just have to move myself out a little bit, away from the rain. But if you can look back here, right about there, look at that rainwater falling off. So what I'm going to do is empty out the tin. I can collect rainwater in that tin and then take a sip and do that again and again and I'll be able to stay hydrated. So here's that water, and uh, yeah, I mean it's not a ton, but do this five or ten times and you've had a cup of water, and that's uh, going to help you stay hydrated. Bottoms up. Nice, nice. It's good. We got a break in the rain, so I'm going to go out and collect firewood. Now at this point, what I'm going to do is just pile all the wood I can right next to my shelter. Then if the sky opens up again, I can start pulling it in, organizing it, breaking it into different sizes, feather sticking, etc. But while it's not raining, I'm gonna do everything I can to be out and about and gathering a ton of firewood. Here's the initial pile of wood I've collected. And that took about 20 minutes. So we'll get more, but that's at least a start. I wanna show you over here as well. I found this, which is a possibility for a reflector. So if I can break the wires there and open that up, I can eventually set up a reflector to force the heat or reflect the heat back into the shelter. I've got my firewood and I can always get more. There's definitely more around the area, but I wanna actually think about fishing now because early in the morning and late in the evening are gonna be your best times to do that. And before the time of day changes and maybe the weather changes again, I wanna see if I can grab some dinner. And so we're gonna try that fishing kit and I've got the pond in front of me. I'm gonna find a good location. I don't even know if there's, if there's fish in here. We'll see, there's probably tiny little ones, but you know, maybe some, some largemouth bass or some sunfish, bluegill, you know, panfish type of things. Um, we'll give it a shot now and see what happens. 
I found a spot that looks like it may have some potential, so let's open this up, and I'm gonna do it up here on this rock as opposed to down in the, the leaves, just to uh, try to keep all this stuff together. Rain is starting up again, so we'll see. All right, that's totally empty, so let's see what we have here. I'm not gonna use these safety pins at this point, so we can put them back in. There's another safety pin and another safety pin. So we got four safety pins. I do have a needle, we'll put that back in as well. And looks like here's our kit. So we've got some swivels, some hooks, and some weights. I'm just gonna take the line and take out one hook. So that's it, just a hook in my line. I think that's all I need right now. Let me get a long, slender uh, sapling or something like that to build my fishing pole out of. All right, we've definitely got some rain coming here. I just wanna show you one technique. Uh, some people like to, you know, wrap their line around a smooth log or like a water bottle and then throw it out and retrieve it. I just prefer to get a long stick and to swing my um, line out, drop it in the water and then slowly pull it back in. One thing I wanna recommend is when you have your line all coiled up like this, let it out nice and slowly so you don't tangle it. So I'm just gonna kinda walk gently back and slowly back and unravel it so I don't get knots in it and in turn, you know, lose a section because it all gets, it gets all knotted up. Plus that's just a hassle. Mentally it's frustrating so just Take your time as you unravel this so you don't have any issues. So here's what we've got. Two small wood grubs. And I did see a very small fish in one of the tributaries between the two ponds. So we're gonna take half of that big guy, put him on the hook, and see what we can do. So obviously this guy is tiny, but this guy is meat. So I could, uh, I could basically just gut him, cook him, and eat him whole. I could use him as bait. I just don't want him to flip out here. I'm gonna toss this guy back in, because I don't need to eat him today. I'm not in a real life survival scenario. So we'll put him back in and let him, let him grow up a bit more. I could have kept on fishing for a little bit more and maybe caught a couple more small fish. Um, but I want to go through some more items in the SOL survival kit and also use the SE hung list a little bit more. I did manage to get one of those metal pieces opened up and now I'm, uh, I've got a reflector. Got to be careful in the process. I nicked my finger and was bleeding a little bit. But I did use the duct tape to, uh, to cover that up. So when I uh, eventually get home, I'll clean that out much better. But at least I've got something to deal with it in the moment. Right, I've located some more birch. I want to get a bunch of this bark. If I get that uh, quick tinder going, I can gently feed some of this bark in. It's got oils that'll burn well. So we'll do this with the hungless. You can also maybe see a little bit of my uh, kindling baby. I put some of those very small pieces of kindling I found up my shirt to use my body heat to actually dry it out. So it's between this green layer and this black layer. Hopefully that'll dry it out a little bit. And there's that, with the help of the Essie Hunglis. So yeah, I'm definitely getting some nice feathers there. And I'm not gonna try to burn this as a feather stick, but now I've got some nice curls I can take off and feed into the fire as it gets going. Here's a quick look around the shelter. That's some of the uh, wood I was drying out over there. 
Got some wood that I've batoned, some small sticks, some small strips of birch bark, a big pile of birch bark, and then over here, we've got our pile of wood. Here's our reflector, and I actually got another piece of metal to get the uh, fire up off the ground, and we're gonna give it a shot now. Here's your quick tinder, all fluffed up, and there's a the little sparking device, and we're gonna put this on top of that, actually on top of a piece of wood first, just since that's extremely wet right now. I've actually got the other half of the quick tinder right there, so you know if that starts to fizzle out or it just burns out and I don't get the fire going quickly enough, I haven't used the whole thing. Ooh, there we go. Everything is so wet, it's amazing. Got a little bit of life here. We'll see if it lasts. And it looks like it's out. Yep. All right. Yeah, I mean, it is amazing how damp everything is. So we're gonna give it another shot here. Got the other half of the quick tender. Want to show you the successes and the failures as well. It's not always perfect by any means. Quick tender part two. All right, birch bark. Some more birch bark. Maybe some of the shavings, we'll see if they go up at all. Really gotta nurse this thing. It's trying. No way, by no means are we out of the woods yet. No pun intended here. All right, I think we got a solid base here that we can work with. Still raining. Uh, this is not an easy process to keep that fire going. So, you know, just because you got it up and going doesn't mean you should take off and wander away for an hour because if a big, you know, rainstorm kicks up again this could go out and you're back to square one cool thing about this you know the scrap metal i found is that it's definitely reflecting heat and also i can prop up some wood there to dry out as the fire is actually going so we have a shelter we've made fire we know where we can get water on top of the uh, shelter off the mylar blanket and we also caught that fish so we do have at least a little bit of food if i went back out again and fished some more i could probably catch at least Maybe a couple more of those small ones, and it's not a ton of food, but at least it's something in my belly. So as far as survival situation, we're doing okay right now. Again, we have our whistle and our signal mirror, so if we want to get somebody's attention, that's a good way to do it. As I wrap up our survival scenario now and head back home into everyday life, I first wanna to talk to you about the items we use. First up, the SC Hungless. Again, this all these products came to us from Smoky Mountain Knifeworks. This is gonna run you $153.95 over on their website. And um, 
There are a variety of different colors. The only one that's going to run you a little bit more up to uh, around 159 is going to be the Venom, which is that lime green and then the bright orange handle. But you've got this, you know, kind of a tan with the tannish handle. You've got a gray handle with black blades. Lots of different options for the Hungless. I really like this blade a lot. So my, as far as one tool options, my go-to has been the Topps uh, Bushcraft Kukri. Um, and I still like that a lot, but this thing performed really well. Um, that thickness is just right, I think, so it's .188. So I'm able to do some aggressive chopping, but also not feel like it's just totally unmanageable and really thick. Um, the BK2 is a huge knife, but I find that thing hard to use or harder to use when it comes to some of those smaller tasks. This thing just did a bang up job all day long. So I chop small branches, I chop big branches, I chop down my fishing pole, um, I did some shaving and got some shavings for the fire. Um, yeah, I mean, it just did whatever I needed it to do and it did it well. So, will I give this a thumbs up? Absolutely. Definitely recommend the, uh, the SE Hungless. Cool looking knife. Again, that I, I like a neutral handle and that is a neutral handle. Got that big finger guard there and I was able to wield this thing. I feel like effectively it did everything I needed it to do. So I feel like if you took this and then maybe got an SC, um Azula and run it, ran that as a neck knife or a small knife on your belt, man, that'd be a, a powerful combo. Maybe I'll uh, partner up with um, Jeremiah from Country Prepper and maybe he can make a setup for me with an Azula and this as a, uh, you know, a one tool or two tool option kind of setup. But I really like this, uh, really like this knife. The uh, 1095, I'm gonna have to go home and clean this up because it's been raining and nasty all day. But yeah, this thing is, this thing is beast. Really, really enjoyed using it. The sheath, for uh, you know, for a knife, um, usually you know when people invest a lot of money in a knife, they're gonna want to like get a custom sheath. But this sheath is really quite nice. So you got that Kydex, you got that ballistic nylon. Uh, I added the pouch. The pouch is gonna run you around 18 bucks over at Smoky Mountain Knife Works, and um, this is this is a cool option. So uh, you saw the SOL Scout kit. I took everything other than the uh, mylar blanket and put it in here but if you just put this on and then added you know a headlamp or a bigger fishing kit or maybe one small mylar blanket and uh, you know a fire steel lots of options for that and I you can see it's a little bit loose now because I took the paracord off to use it but run a little paracord on there and that thing is locked in so that's a that's a nice setup for you know this is gonna run you 18 bucks that's gonna run you about 155 153 95 um, so for you know less than 200 bucks, you've got a beastly blade, a good sheath, and a kit that you can uh, you know put a bunch of items in. So very very happy with all that. Um, let's talk about the the Scout kit. I didn't um, I, I rolled into some footage of it before it was unpacked, but you do get this little waterproof bag as well, and it rolls up on top here. And so you know what you could do is you could take this kit as is and stick it in a pocket, and then with the sheath. You could put in some different items in this little um, little pouch, and then you've got you know the the SOL Scout kit, and then you've got maybe a headlamp or a couple extra things in here. So just between those two, you could have a really nice, uh, really nice setup. I'll say this: I I did I like the items in here. I used most of the items in here. I didn't have to use the compass or the signaling mirror. Um, in general, I've yet to find a a individual survival kit that meets all my needs as I as I want them uh, met. I find that some of them give a good base and some of them give a not so good base. This gives a really solid base. I would say about 75% of this to 80% of this I would keep and I would add some additional things, maybe make a couple changes. As far as changes, I would add in a fire steel. I'd probably add in some uh, waterproof matches. I just like to have a lot of options for when a fire it comes to getting a fire started because on a day like today, you really need to have a lot of uh, a lot of options available. This is going to run you just under 27 bucks over at Smoky Mountain Knife Works, and I put links to all the items from this video down below in that description section, so you can head over there and uh, purchase any of these or obviously other items from Smoky Mountain Knife Works. But between this and the hungless and the little pouch, that's a that's a nice setup. I mean, you saw I was able to do shelter fire, food, and water as well. Um, I would like to see a little bit more duct tape in here. The The little center is kind of a, a plastic rod they put in to wrap the duct tape around. Uh, took up more space than I think it needed to, but give me a little extra duct tape, upgrade the fishing kit a little bit here and throw in a fire steel, and I think you've got a nice a nice uh, setup for your, um, you know, as a, as a basic kit for survival when you get out in the woods. 
Just a few quick thoughts as we wrap up here. First, I want to say thanks again to Smoky Mountain Knifeworks. Their website, smkw.com, head over there and check it out. Um, their tagline is, is, if it cuts, we carry it. So they've got a lot of options over there. Um, I've got a, a review of a Victorinox knife from them, and I was looking around their website at their Victorinox knives, and it just goes on and on and on. So they have just a, a massive array of knives and other gear as well. They carry tactical gear and some backpacks and obviously survival kits, things like that. So definitely check them out. Second thing I wanna mention is you saw my failure at the fire and then second try it worked. So get out there and work on your skills. You know, you're gonna think I did it once, I'm good, but yeah, you just gotta keep practicing, 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 practicing. Um, on a day like today, a bow drill, no chance. I cannot imagine uh, getting a bow drill started. I, really, everything that I touched was wet in some way. So, you know, if you're like, well, I'll just do a bow drill, nah, you probably wanna have a lighter with you, fire steel, something else, so you've got a better, uh, a better chance to affect rescue or to get that fire going to get warm, cook food, purify water, uh, whatever it is. So definitely wanna encourage you to get out there and work on those skills. All right, guys, thanks as always for checking out our videos. We have a couple more videos right here lined up for you, so you can check those out. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to Everyday Tactical Vids on YouTube, please do so now. Just click that little red subscribe button, and then also click the bell so you'll get notifications when new videos come out. We are all over the social media world, so check us out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Tumblr as well. More videos coming soon. Take care.